Hello, I'm back in the exotic tropical border today, which is where I was yesterday uh, when I was wrapping the Musa Bajju, the Japanese banana, the green banana. And there's a full video on those on my channel. Uh, in my hand, I've got some loppers, a pizza cutter, some weed control membrane and secateurs. And on the floor here, there's an old bit of ply board. I'll tell you all about this in a minute. It's my third visit to this border in recent weeks. The first time I came here was to remove the Ensete ventricosum Marilia, the red banana from that corner. That's up in the loft above my garage, as is the Ensete Hiniba, which was here. But I'm still left with various plants, and that's what I'm going to deal with today. I've got lots of cannas, various different colocations, and I also have some gingers, tetrapanax there, there's a trachycarpus at the far end. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all the leaves off. All the leaves are going on that board. And that's what the pizza cutter's for. I'm going to chop them all up. They're going back on top of the soil as a, as a first level of mulch and also plant food. Now these stalks of these canners and some of the other plants are a little bit too woody to cut through on this board with this pizza cutter. So once I've removed all the leaves, I'm just going to chop them down inch by inch and let those inches of woody stalk drop on the soil where again they will mulch down and feed this border. Eventually everything here, apart from the Musa Bajju, of course the Tetrapanax is not going to be cut down, neither is the Trachycarpus, but pretty much everything else will be levelled to the ground and then you'll see lots of leaf matter and stalks on top of that. Then I'm going to go and get probably about 10 barrel loads of manure from my neighbours who have some ponies and put that on top. Now I'm not going to make you suffer me watching all that as I do it. So what I'll do is I'll, I will record it, but I'll give it to you in fast forward and any pertinent points I'll drop in in the edit as a narration and then I'll come back at the end just to wrap up and say goodbye. So let me get on with this and uh, enjoy the video. I'll put some music in as well. And I'll see you in a few minutes. I must confess, it makes me feel a little bit sad cutting off all these wonderful leaves. Um, we've not really had any cold weather yet and it seems to me that there's still some warm days to come, but I can't afford to take any risks at the moment because at any moment we could have a severe frost and I want to get this border prepared and ready. This amazing canna in the corner is Canna musifolia. It's a wonderful specimen of a plant. And in fact, I would grow this for the foliage rather than the flowers. And down come the stalks now, inch by inch. And it's quite satisfying feeling these loppers going through these semi-woody stems. It's like cutting through rhubarb. And I can see all these inches and inches of stems dropping onto the soil and I know they're going to do a lot of good in terms of feeding the soil and adding structure. The tetrapanics you can see here will not be pruned back. I'm going to leave it as long as possible. I'm going to build up some mulch around the rootstock, but it's going to be left as it is. But sure enough, in the fullness of time, when we have a severe frost, all those leaves will die back and we'll be left with branches. And then next spring, hopefully, it will start afresh and grow even bigger and higher. And you can see the tree ferns to the left in my tree fern garden. Those are going to be given some protection very soon too. Uh, I've done a video on that and I'll, I'll put a link in the description box below this one. I'm just pointing out here that I've found some canna seeds and I'm going to save those. I'm going to have a go at propagating them. I believe it's quite complicated, something to do with freezing them and then dropping them in boiling water or something. I'll do some research. Down comes the ginger, which I shall chop up in situ to feed the soil next year. That's a little tray of Colocasia Pink China Runners, which I was trying to propagate. Not sure what's happened with those. Not really seeing any signs of life just yet, but I won't give up on them. At the bottom of this one, I found some beautiful purple, bright purple little bulblets, which are clearly next year's canners. You can see them there. They'll be covered in manure shortly, and hopefully they'll survive the winter. Now let's get to work with the pizza cutter, which of course I will clean thoroughly before I put it back in the kitchen drawer. The theory being that chopping all these leaves up into smaller pieces will help them to decompose more quickly. 
because there'll be more bruises and more cuts for bacteria to get into and of course the smaller the piece the bigger the surface area and now onto the border they go I'm trying to distribute them evenly and now off down the lane with my wheelbarrow and long handled Irish spade and my dog Simba to where my neighbour's ponies manure is kept. My neighbour has seven polo ponies which is great for me because it produces an abundance of good manure. Now I'm going to use manure that's relatively fresh and ideally you should be using well rotted manure on a border but it's not that I'm planting growing plants into this, I'm using it as a surface dress. Now you'll notice on top of this manure pile that's quite a lot of sawdust and that's from my neighbour's rabbits. And that's great because uh, the decomposition process is aided by um, various chemicals. So there's quite a lot of nitrogen in the manure and quite a lot of carbon in the sawdust and that will help with the decomposition and the composting and the rotting down of the manure. So that's good to have a bit of a mix. Now these plant pots are for this year's tulip bulbs but I'm just going to use them to help me weigh down the weed fabric because I'm on my own doing this job and I need something to weigh the ends of the fabric down as I roll it out. The purpose of the weed fabric here is not actually to suppress weeds, it's actually to kind of provide a little thermal layer that'll capture the air, you know, it's all about layering up. So we've got the green matter, we've got the manure and the compost, we've got a little bit of sawdust and now we've got a cap, almost like a cap on a, on a, a landfill site covering it all up and underneath there when it starts to decompose and produce a little bit of warmth that that cap of weed fabric hopefully will hold some of that heat and temperature to the ground. Now a few house bricks just to weigh the edges down and the job is done the job's a good one and here I am back to say goodbye. So there you go, the exotic tropical border covered in all the leafy greens, which I trimmed off the canners. Then a four or five inch layer of manure, which will act as a mulch. And that mulch had wood shavings in it, which was from my neighbor's rabbits. And that will help because the green, the nitrogen in the green and the carbon in the wood shavings will create that chemical reaction, which will lead to the composting and the decomposition and the breaking down of that mulch. That may also create a chemical reaction which produces heat. I hope so. And I told you about these in yesterday's video. These are little tiny thermometers which link to your phone via Bluetooth and you get two in a packet for about 16 or 17 pounds. I will put the link to that product in the description box below this video. And as always, if you buy it through that link, I get a commission and your support is greatly appreciated. Now I've got two of those, I've got one in my lounge at the moment, but I'm going to bring it out in the garden. I'm going to put one in a food bag. I'm going to bury it in this mulch and I'm going to put the other on top of the weed fabric and I'm going to see, I'm going to do an experiment to see if there's any differential in the temperature between underneath the weed fabric and on top. Hopefully we'll prove that this mulch is providing a shield of insulation. Um, another good idea for you, which came from Colin up in Scotland, thank you Colin, was um, if you've got any tender plants in your border and you've done your mulching and everything and you, you know, you're expecting a really cold spell, just invert a terracotta plant pot on top of it because it just produces that kind of thermal shield and hopefully there'll be some residual heat in the ground which will seep up and keep it nice and warm, well, not necessarily warm but it certainly shouldn't freeze. And don't forget my other tip, which I told you about in my uh, video about the collocations, I think. Um, put in a tea light on a brick underneath one of these inverted in your greenhouse or your, your shed and it should just keep the temperature up above freezing. Hope you found that interesting, enjoyable. I found it hard work. I've earned a bath, got a stinking cold. I'm going to have a glass of wine in the bath, why not? I'll see you soon. Do my tulips this week in these pots, by the way. So stay tuned for that, subscribe, hit the notifications bell, comment below. Bye for now.